Prasatwan Buddhist Hilir Perra, Putra Heights Buddhist Society and Meta Lodge JB. Okay, we are, I welcome all our online listeners too. Okay, a synopsis of today's talk. Buddha first taught the Four Noble Truths at the Deer Park in Sanaf, Northern India. He has explained about how the suffering arises and how suffering ceases to the five ascetics. This event is also known as the turning of the Dharma wheel. Okay, and um, Bante N- Venerable Nyaninda is a graduate in electrical engineering from Sydney University, Australia. He received higher ordination as a bhikkhu under Sadamara, Sadamaramsi Sayadaw in 2004. He has received serious contemplative training under Pak Hau Sayadaw. Let us all welcome Venerable Nadinda to today's talk. Let us all kneel and bow three times as a mark of respect to Bante Nadinda and Bante Venerable Damarakita. Suki Hotu. Okay. We will start by paying homage to the Buddha. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sam buddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sam buddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato Sama Sam Buddha Sa. Okay. You can hear the mic. Okay. So today's topic is the main core of Buddha's teaching, which is Four Noble Truths. And actually, it is the solution for all problems. So it's one, one solution that can be used to apply to all problems and this four noble truth basically can be summarized into problem you got to find out what's the problem if you want to solve anything the cause the solution and what's the method and this can be used in every part of our life for example let's say business you know there's something not right with your business you got to identify what's the problem probably it's cash flow problem then you've got to find what's the cost. The cost may be because you are very slow in collecting your debt. Then you've got to find the solution. Solution is when you have enough cash at hand. And finally, what's the method? Method may be, you know, you've got to make sure that money comes in faster than money going out. So business is one way. Engineering also, if your engine has some problem and you don't know what is it, you've got to find out what's the problem. You know, probably, the machine that's not working, the key problem is the engine, okay? Then what's the cost? It might be engine oil insufficient. Then what's the solution? When every, the engine operates smoothly, then it's solved. Then what's the method? Probably add in engine oil. So it can be used in whatever, um, in fact, all problems that you have in your life. You have to identify the problems, identify the cause, identify how you solve it, and then the method. Now, today what we're going to talk about is the problem in life, okay? Life actually have, we will, I will slowly in this talk to show you that there's only one problem and that's Dukkha, okay? Dukkha normally translated traditionally as suffering and I don't really like the word uh, suffering because Dukkha covers a very wide range of things. I would prefer the word unsatisfactoriness. Okay, because Dukkha actually has um, one way to look at Dukkha has three parts Dukkha Dukkha, Vitparinama Dukkha and Sankara Dukkha 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 is the suffering due to pain and all that and also suffering, mental suffering, those are Dukkha Dukkha Vitparinama Dukkha is due to change so I don't like the word suffering because happiness is also Dukkha why happiness is Dukkha? because it's impermanent, it changes. When it changed, we, we felt a loss. We felt that we lost something that we like. So, dukkha, a better word is 
unsatisfactoriness. So just now I mentioned Dukkha Dukkha, Viparinama Dukkha, and the third one is Sankara Dukkha. Sankara is sometimes translated as mental formation or mental volition, which means that any um, activity of the mind, or basically when we when we have the process of thinking or do something, because once we do something or think something, our self come out. That's when dukkha will come. There's unsatisfactoriness. We will go more more into that. Okay. So basically, dukkha, unsatisfactoriness. That's the problem. Cause normally we identify the cause as tangha. Okay. This is uh, after that. I will go into Dhamma Chakka Pawatana Sutta, which is the turning of the view Sutta, the first Sutta taught by the Buddha. Buddha did define all this in, in that Sutta. So, but I want to give you a rough summary first. So we have dukkha as unsatisfactoriness, the cause as tangha. Tangha traditionally translated as craving. Okay, I will give you another translation later on. Um, now we'll use the translation craving first, and the the solution is the cessation of this tangha, and the path, the method is the noble eightfold path, which all Buddhists are familiar. Okay, and normally noble eightfold path is taught as sila, samadhi, panya. You discipline yourself, then you calm yourself down, and then you have wisdom. So in short, traditionally we were taught that, or conventionally in Thera Theravada teaching, we were taught that all your problems in life is because of the unsatisfactoriness, the struggle inside you. The cause is because you have this grasping for things. The solution is to let go, to be free from this, to let go. And the method to use is train yourself to be disciplined in the precepts, in also your in precepts basically in your speech, uh, action, and your thoughts. Then you calm your mind down, and you will have the wisdom to continue to not get lost in this craving okay so this works okay and useful especially with for people with a lot of strong willpower okay so this is one perspective that most of us are familiar with today i'm going to introduce you another perspective okay you can use both perspectives together there is no better or worse pers perspective but I prefer the second perspective, which I call effortless effort. Okay, because by using view, by forcing yourself, sometimes it might be difficult. Why? For example, let's say if you ask a person who has uh, addicted to cigarette or drugs, to ask them to let go of the cigarette or drugs, not so easy. Okay, why? Because we have we've forgotten to look at a few factors. One is to the person who is smoking the cigarette or the drug addict, the cigarette or the drug is medicine. They don't take it as poison. No matter how you try to let them know, even they know intellectually, but inside their heart, to them is still medicine because they get a sense of calm, release from the struggle in their life when they take this so-called medicine. So to me, the best way is to change their perspective by using wisdom. The teachings of the Buddha emphasize a lot on using wisdom. Okay? And later on, I will stress to you that actually the Noble Eightfold Path starts with Panya, which is Samaditi first, right view, which is wisdom. So actually in Buddhism, you always the first step is wisdom. So how to apply practically apply wisdom in, in this form is two ways one you got to let the cigarette smoker really experience see and realize that the cigarette is poison okay because as long as that person think it is medicine you cannot let him stop for example if the person think oxygen is necessary for him you can't let him stop breathing in oxygen or if the person is struggling in his life financially to support the family and he has a few go bar you can't tell him that this is useless 
until you can prove to them that the oxygen is actually poison gas or the gold bar is actually rat poison, then they will automatically let go. So actually, they have done studies in the West where they get the cigarette smoker to actually slowly taste the cigarette and actually it tastes terrible. So make them slowly to be 100% aware when they are smoking the cigarette. And this way will change their mental programming to realize that what they're taking in is poison. So this is one way to solve it. And I call it effortless effort and using wisdom is because once they see that what they're taking in is not medicine, is poison, they'll automatically let go. Another way to solve it is by solving their problem. Their problem is not the cigarette or the drug because that is their solution, their medicine. The problem is they, are, they can't stay in the present moment. They are struggling, they can't find peace. So that is the problem. So if you can show them a way where they can be at peace with themselves without the cigarette, then they don't need a cigarette. So this is other way works um, for some people, not everyone, but it works, the, it works for people who at least need the interest and curiosity to explore. If the person's the mind is shut, it doesn't work. Okay? So this one, another, uh, one example I want to show you is um, a friend of my brother who is a chain smoker. Every time he needs to smoke when he's out with friends, but he doesn't feel comfortable. He knows smoking is not good for him, but he tried quitting many times, it doesn't work. And he, every time he finds it difficult because when you go out with friends, all the friends don't smoke and he got to go outside alone to smoke, he does feel um, a struggle there, but he can't find a way to solve. Until my brother introduced him to Goenka 10 days meditation retreat, somehow, maybe you can say, you know, affinity or whatever, during that retreat, he found his peace and joy and he realized that he don't need a cigarette. So from then on, he never smoked. Seems very easy, but when you hit the right uh, wisdom in us, we have the wisdom in us, but we just need to turn on the light bulb. Then it becomes very easy. So um, this is one way I want to show you that if you see the, the problem and the cause immediately together, your solution is done already. Okay? Why I say that is, um, I think I've shared this before. For example, if you are being chased by a wild elephant, okay, and you suddenly realize that it's a dream, how do you solve the wild elephant? How do you solve the wild elephant? Huh? You will run. No, you, you were chased by a wild elephant and you suddenly realize that it's a dream. Yeah, correct. So actually, the problem is not the wild elephant. The problem is the dream and that's the cause and that's the solution and that's the method. Okay? So actually, all four are together. That's why I put here, problem equals cause equals solution equals method equals problem. If you can see this, one look, you solve immediately everything. Okay, why? I will go into more detail. Because I want to, and I've shown you all before that your everyday waking life is exactly the same as your dream, which is an illusion. So if you see that it's a dream, which is the problem, because all, all your problems in life is the same, is from that dream. So when you saw that problem, you saw the cause, you saw the solution, and the method is done. Okay? Now, um, before I move on to this, there is another, um, just now we, we were solving about holding our addiction into some object, like addiction to cigarettes, addiction to um, drugs, Actually, the biggest addiction we have is through our ideas, opinion, and belief, to our concepts. That's where all our quarrel, our war comes from. Because we hold on very strongly, and this is where the cause, the craving come from. 
we hold on very strongly to our idea, belief, and concept. I want to show you one very simple, maybe not very important idea, but to show you that it can be soft when we look at different perspectives. This one comes from our discussion we have on our Friday night uh, sessions. When we go on holiday, vacation to somewhere, people of our generation have this idea that we must see as much experience as much as we can so that we can squeeze the dollar out as much as we can. But for the next generation, our children's generation, to them is when they go on holiday, they will sleep until lunchtime and then wake up just in time for lunch and then maybe go out to see one or two things and then come back and that's it. To us, you know, it's a waste of money. So there will be friction. But if you step back and see that our belief, our opinion, our idea that holiday must see and experience everything, it's not a fact. It's just an opinion. Because actually holiday is for us to rest. And in fact, I have a very close uh, German monk who told me that when he was working, every time he go on holiday, actually he need a holiday to rest from the holiday because the holiday is too stressful. So if you can take a minute to step back and see this, we won't hold on too strongly to an idea that holiday must be seeing everything to the maximum. We can accept the idea that holiday means take a break, relax. So I'm not saying which way is correct. I'm saying that if you are able to explore, step back and look, many of our ideas, opinions, beliefs, we think it's a fact, it's actually not a fact. It's actually a story created by us. A story created by us is an illusion, like a dream. It's not real, but it's not nothing. Okay, I keep stressing that because for us, when we think of illusion, we think it's nothing. Illusion is not nothing. Games, online games now, is an illusion, but it's a big money business, billions of dollars. It's not nothing. Also, rainbow is an illusion. It's there, but it's not there. But we never say, no, this is nothing. We enjoy rainbow. Okay, so something for us to, to take. And also, I want to go further on this with other examples that when someone say something or do something, let's say we feel that the person insults us, it's actually our opinion. The person says something, it might be constructive criticism. But for us, we have this opinion, interpretation that it is an insult, that it's the person looking down on us and so on. So again, for us to step back and see that all our opinion is just opinion, it's just story. Another example I want to give, so that at least you get a feel, is recently um, a good friend of mine uh, invited me to visit her father, which is 91 years old. And this 91 years old father, when a person is old, they actually they feel a bit lonely and also afraid of death. They want many people around them. So that is the problem, okay? The problem is not other things. And, but it's not a big problem, it's because it's natural. So this, I, this father was complaining, saying that, you know, no one take me out. Immediately, the daughter got very defensive as you know, where do you want to go? So we get very defensive because when the father says, no one take me out, our interpretation is father say, I'm not failure. I'm not doing enough and so on. We have 100 different interpretations when someone says something. We add in an amazing amount of story and special effects. Then we get upset over it. We get not satisfied. So again, I'm stressing that it is our interpretation, identification of whatever that's happening out there, our story, our illusory story, that's what causes problem. Okay, now, we'll go to the Four Noble Truths. Okay, so, what does Buddha say? What is the definition of the Four Noble Truths? So Buddha says, Jati pi dukkha, Jati as in birth. Okay? This one, we all of us can identify. Birth as in, you know, you getting born, there is this struggle to different environments, so there is pain, suffering there. Jara pi dukkha, old age, that's suffering. Because when you grow old, like I mentioned just now, the person who is 91 years old, we have this fear and so on. We are Biadi Pi Duko, 
sickness is suffering. When you are sick, you can't do what you want. Even myself, when I was struggling with cough for three months, it was like, you know, when is this going to end? You know, is it going to be forever and so on? You struggle. Maranang pi dukang, death is suffering, is duka, okay, unsatisfying or suffering. Apiehi sampa yogo, being with people that you don't like, that is definitely a torture, okay. Next, piehi vipa yogo, separation from people that we like, that's also a, a torture. Yam pichang nalabati tampi dukang, things that we want, we can't get. That is definitely a, a big struggle. So all this, we are very familiar. Okay, we always talk about old age, uh, old age, birth, old age, sickness, and death, the samsara. That's our suffering. Okay, but the key thing actually is the last part. Sankitena pachu padana kanda dukkha. The in summary, the five. Okay, the normal translation pancha is five. Upadana normally translate as. Uh, Clinging, grasping, uh, kanda as aggregates. Okay, so five grasping. In short, the five grasping aggregates or five clinging aggregates is dukkha. But I prefer Pante Punyaji's translation, which to me make it easier for un- for us to understand. His translation is the five. He translate pancha as five, upadana as personalization, and. Kanda as processes. Actually, we have five processes that's running, like the uh, body process, the feeling process, the perception process, the uh, mental formation process, where we make stories out of whatever we perceive, and the consciousness, the awareness process. These five process is not a problem, but the minute we personalize it as me, my process, that's the problem. When you personalize it, like for example, you personalize it. My father says that I'm not failure. I'm not doing enough, although I've done so much. That personalization is the problem. Or I am the parents. I'm the father. I pay money for this vacation, so we must see as much as possible. Why does the kid have their own way? That is the problem. So it's the personalization when we try to claim ownership over things. Okay. When you can see this, actually we will step back. So it's not about then you say then I shouldn't uh, personalize. It's not about should or should not. I keep emphasizing that my sharing is always about I'm giving you a description of the truth, not a prescription. Whether you want to do A or B, it's up to you. But when you see that your hand is in fire, you don't need to know what to do to save your hand. You will know what to do. So as long as you can see how life works, you will know what to do. So similarly, if you can see that you are personalizing all your events in life, you will slowly stop personalizing. But first, you have to see it first. If you can't see, you can't take the second step. Okay. So now, I want to do an exercise. Okay. For this exercise, very simple. I need you to give feedback. Very simple feedback. Just tell me what you feel after that. Okay. So this exercise I will go through first. Then we will we will do slowly. Okay. So this exercise is, I my favorite exercise is for you to think of something that make you very fearful, very afraid. I don't know. For some people, it might be lizards only. You no, know, li- they see lizards, they jump. Okay. My sister-in-law jumps when she see lizards. Or it might be cockroaches. I don't know. Or it might be, I don't know, facing someone that very fearful or it might be monster or so on think of an event or thing or, or, uh, or environment that makes you fearful then feel the body part where you feel this fear it might be in your stomach for me last time when i was fearful of exams i always have stomach problem so put your awareness on the part of your body where you have this uh, feeling then stop that thinking don't continue with that fearful thoughts. Continue with being aware of your feeling wherever you are, the body, whichever part of the body, and then slowly see what happens to it. Okay? Any questions? <coughs> Everyone understand the instruction? Okay, then after that, I will ask you for feedback. Okay, so we we'll start now. So think of something that makes you fearful. 
anything that makes you fearful. Okay. Now, feel the part of your body that feel the fear. It could be heart, it could be stomach. You can put your hands there also if you want. Feel that body sensation. Now, don't continue with the fearful thoughts. Continue to aware of the body sensation, whichever part of your body that you, have, that you are feeling. Okay, what do you feel on the body sensations? As you continue aware of it, what happened to the heat? First, you will feel heat. Then, as you continue to be aware, what happens to the heat? And then, after that, when you keep observing, then, okay, another person. Yep, and then Yep Okay, so His answer is you, know, you feel contraction and then You feel slowly release The first person is you, know, you feel heat Then more heat and then slowly Subside the heat Okay, next You couldn't, okay Okay, okay There are some people who can't think Okay, so uh, Never mind, it's good. Okay, that means maybe you are sane, not 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 fearful or anything. Okay, next person. Okay, then. And then, as you keep aware, then. Okay, okay, next. So first. You feel tension on the body, then slowly, you know, it becomes a little bit more comfortable as you be a more uh, accepting towards it. Okay, next person. Okay, so have the fear, and then slowly it, it comes down, subside. But what type of feeling on the fear on the body? The body. Fear is the mental body. Pain, okay. Okay, slowly goes down. Okay. Okay, next person. Uncomfortable in the heart. Okay, slowly it comes off. Okay. Next. Okay, okay. Actually, interesting. Usually, okay, I'll try. So, usually, men can't feel. Okay. Huh? Okay. So you feel that the yeah. Okay. 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 Feel it. Yeah. Okay, goes away slowly, okay? Okay, next person. Okay. You feel on your body. Uh, no, not about next, but think, next, next time you try this exercise, just aware of that body feeling. No need to let go, just aware of the body feeling. Okay, next.
what do you what happens to that body feeling as you look at it? Uh, it changes to intense anger. Intense anger. Yeah. And then, then, as you look at it, then unless you find a way to uh, uh, relieve the cause, huh? uh, anger becomes very, very intense. Okay, as no, I don't continue anger. This fear. Okay. Anyway, as you, my instruction is the thinking of the fear, and then stop thinking, and then just feel on the the body. But anger can also apply same. Mm, yeah, you you feel uh, uh, intense heat, then uh, you subside. Uh. Okay, after that it subside. Okay, first feel intense heat, then subside. Next person. Okay. Okay, but no need to pull on your whole uh, rising and point. Just aware of that. It has the same effect. Just aware of that sensation of shivering. It will have the same effect. Okay. Next. Oh, I'm afraid of making decision. Don't know whether it's right or wrong. Then what do you feel in your body My when you make heart, decision? Heart beats very fast. Okay, heart beat very fast. Then uh, when you just now the exercise, when you keep aware of the heartbeat, what happened to the heartbeat? Uh, it slowed down and back to normal. It slowed down back to normal. Okay, good. Okay, next. Uh, yeah. Uh, I also have the same problem. So when I when I think of my fear, my heart starts a bit pumping a little bit faster. Then when I stop to think about it, and then I focus on the pumping of the heart, then it sort of pumps lower, and then I feel a little bit more calmer. Okay. okay. So when you stop, continue thinking about the problem, your and continue aware of the body sensation, it slowly gets calmer. Okay. Last person. Uh, for me, it would be fear of being found out, especially if you do something really very wrong. Fear of being found out, okay. Then what do you feel on your body you sensation? You feel intense, coldness. Long. Cold, okay. Uh, but then when you keep looking at that coldness, what happened to the coldness? Uh, it depends on whether you are able to... Overcome it, uh, Not yeah. overcome, just aware of that coldness. Oh, then you you, you realize you, there's nothing you can do about it, so you sort of try to control the. Not thing. control. My exercise um is to just look at that coldness. Well, we for a while we just try to be uh take note that uh. It, for a while, you become more settled down, then it will, it will slowly dissip, uh, not so cold anymore. Okay, you will slowly subside, not so cold. Okay, some of you didn't get the point, but I want to stress this and you might not be aware. The reason I asked you to do this exercise is because I want to show you two things. One is your fear it will be the same for anger and all the other emotions. This exercise is fear, but it's the same for anger. comes from your thinking. When you stop thinking fear, continue that fearful thought, your fear will stop by itself. So what it means, very significant, what it means is you need effort to continue to make yourself fearful. We always think that we need effort to, make, to stop the fear. Like what she says, oh, I, I, we need to think of something to stop it, to control it. No, you actually, this is a big change if you can, if you can really see or realize this. You are actually needing effort to maintain that fear. Same for anger. You need effort to maintain your anger. You need effort to maintain your depression. You don't need effort to stop it because the minute you don't continue with that chain of thought, when you feel your body sensation, body sensation is impermanent. 
the fearful thought is impermanent. It will change by itself. Automatic, no effort needed. This is what I call effortless effort. But you've got to keep seeing this again and again, exploring this. One time is not enough. When you can see this, the next time when you are fearful, you wouldn't continue to make yourself fearful. So the fear doesn't come from outside. It comes from, again, from the personalization of the normal process. The process of seeing, perceiving something, then we personalize, we add story based on our background that leads it fearful or maybe you know, high, high places is fearful and so on. It's our story. So our story, again, is made up by us. Same as dream. Dream is story made up by us. So it really is an illusion. That's the problem. Our personalization, which is an illusion, is the problem. Once you see that it's an illusion or a dream, already the cause is done, the solution is done, the method is done. So all, all in one. Actually, four in one. So this is the, the best coffee, you have everything in one, four in one. So the key thing is, again, to keep exploring that all your thinking. Here, I want to stress that thinking is not the problem. We have thoughts coming in and out, in and out. That's not a problem. The problem is we get lost in the thoughts and we personalize the thoughts. You can have one million negative thoughts as long as you don't claim ownership of the thoughts. That's not a problem. So you don't need actually to think positive also. Of course, positive thinking is not bad, but you don't need to think positive because as long as you don't claim ownership of those thoughts, whether it's positive or negative, they don't affect you at all. Okay? Another exercise, very simple exercise. This one is, you think of the time when you are the happiest, when you have the most joy. Okay? Can you capture that event or that memory? Okay. Now, what were you thinking exactly at that time when you feel happy, blissful or joyful? What were you thinking exactly, anyone? Sorry? Yeah, that is after. After you were happy, then you will have maybe have these thoughts that don't end so fast. Then the happiness is gone. Okay? But I'm saying that the, when you were happy at that time, what, what was the thinking that caused that? What was the exact thinking that caused that happiness? Yeah, that is your feeling. When you feel very clear, yeah, that's the feeling. I'm saying that what were you thinking at that time? Yes. Actually, you were not thinking anything. There are thoughts that come and go, but you were not thinking anything when you were most happy, joyful, blissful. So again, I want to stress that the problem that we have is the thinking. Not thoughts. Thoughts come and go. The problem is the thinking. If we are not lost in thinkings, we are okay. At this moment now, when you are not thinking anything, what's your feeling? Peaceful, calm. So naturally, again, I want to stress another second point is, naturally, we are peaceful, calm. That's our default. That's default setting. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to meditate to become calm and peaceful. We just have to make sure we don't corrupt this calm and peace, which is already there. So we have to reset all the time. <laughs> Actually, you don't have to reset all the time. You have to remember that you are away from the setting. Because this is default. You have to reset all the time means you still have to do something. So this is the beauty of us human being. We are being, we are not human doing. As long as you know how to be, you're okay. But unfortunately, we always want to do something like, how should I reset? Should I do this to get back? No, you don't, because it's default. Default means if you don't do anything, it's there.
Okay, <coughs> that is another part. This is this is for meditation. Is an exercise to help us to get back to the default setting for those who have difficulty. Okay, so this is meditation is a prescription. So that prescription depends on which teacher you have. Some teacher will you ask you to use object uh, breathing. Some will ask you to just sit and aware. Okay, whichever ob object that is helpful for you. Okay, this is for another discussion. But today's discussion is to tell you that actually you don't have to do anything to get back to the default setting because that's default. Okay, why we have to do something is because our default setting, which is natural, has become not normal. So now we want to get back to the default. But first, if you can accept that your default setting is calm and peace, that's already a big step. Unfortunately, we cannot accept this most of us. So we try to meditate to get to the default setting. That's where you, you're really wrong. If you know this is a default setting, you meditate, it's okay. But if you meditate to get this default setting, it's already there. Okay, any um, questions on this? Okay, so when you think of anything, so uh, you, you can go ahead. So next, I want to move on. How much time do we have? Huh? Okay, we have time. Okay, so, um, so important to see that all the emotions that we have, just now, the exercise, are created by ourselves. Okay? Which means that all our experience in our daily life, this one I stress many times in all my sharing, all the experience, all the emotions that we have is through our thinking, not throughout there. So something for you to contemplate is we actually never ever experience the world. Your family and all that. It might be very shocking, but that's the truth. You never ever experience the world. You only experience your thinking of the world. So Bante, is it uh, we are what we are what we think? Yes, we are what we think, correct. So we 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 are the whole world is formed from our personalization, our thoughts. Your your wife is your idea of the person. It, it, it's not the reality you never experience the reality but i'm not saying there's no reality out there there is a reality out there but you never ever experience it you experience your perspective of the reality since you experience your perspective of your reality and this experience is created by your thinking by your story that you make up you shouldn't be afraid of it so the only thing you if you can learn from this is not to be afraid of your emotion whether it's positive, negative, or even depression, you are going a long way already. Because it's created by yourself. Why are you afraid of it? You have the choice not to continue with this emotion. You might not have a choice what thoughts come every moment, but you have a choice to whether continue thinking this thought or not. So this is a big change in your life, if you can see this. Again, through wisdom. No need effort. Again, I call it effortless effort. Yes, you have to at least make a decision to look in this direction, okay? If you just sit down and go on kaki and not do anything, of course you won't see. You have to at least have this effort to see. Once you see, you don't need any willpower effort to change. So this is what I, I want to keep stressing. So, um, second noble truth, okay? We have finished first noble truth, which I summarize, summarize it to personalization of what we experience. That's the only problem we have, okay? Or you can make it easier to tell yourself, basically, it's your thinking. Thinking, not thoughts. Or thoughts means thoughts, that random thoughts that come. So the next time when you're overthinking, you can tell yourself that this is the cause of my problem. Take a deep breath. This is where deep breath will help in. Meditation will help in to cut your being lost in there. Then automatically, you go back to the default. You don't have to ask me how to get back to default because that's default, okay? You need to get somewhere when it's not default. Default means it's natural you. So as long as you don't continue with the thoughts, then it's back to default. But unfortunately, again, you've got to explore. We have this belief, very strong belief that 
overthinking will help us solve problem. We think that if we can't solve a problem, we think more will solve the problem. We think more will solve the problem. No. Actually, when you think more, it becomes more stressful. When your mind is not calm, it's not efficient, you won't get the solution. Okay? Okay. 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 So, there are few. <coughs> First thing is to see, to realize that the overthinking is not helping you. Now you say that I cannot stop my thinking because you have this very deep belief that overthinking is helping you. So you got to see that number one, your thinking is not reality. For example, just now I give the example of uh, your thinking that go holiday must make use of it to see every single thing. That's a, not a fact. Or your thinking that um, uh, this guy is a bad guy or a good guy. It's not a fact, but we always take it as a fact. So actually, you can say none of your thinking is a fact. So if you can first explore that not to believe in all your thinking, then that's the step that you explore. When you see one time that your thinking is not fact, two times, three times, four times, slowly, automatically, you won't believe your thinking 100%. Then, you won't continue your thinking. You get what I mean? There is no specific method that I prescribe to you because everyone has different way. It's like, how do you learn, how does baby learn to walk or talk? There's no specific way. You just guide them and let them walk. In fact, Mark Twain has this quote that if we were to teach our kids how to learn, how to walk and talk, like the way we teach them how to read and write, all of them will stutter and limp. Because you use a method and force them, it, it doesn't work. Naturally, we will know if you look at the right direction. Okay, so the key thing is to keep exploring that your thoughts are not fact, not reality. You keep exploring this, then one day you don't see that they are true. And then also see that or to try that one time not to, uh, not to keep thinking to solve your problem. Once you're successful one time, then the next time we be more successful. I'll give you an example. There is this company, which very big company, a real life story. They have like you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of contract and they were supposed to do this project in they, have, they know their, their engineering uh, team knows they can only finish in one year, but they were asked to finish in half a year. And they know it's impossible. So they keep thinking all sorts of things, keep thinking and cracking their brain. They couldn't solve it. So the leader, the head says, you know, forget it. You know, we, we can't you know, work 24 hours like this. So we'll give up on this. We'll tell the client that we can't do it and I will take the blame. Okay, so you all go home, we finish, we cut off this project, we can't do. So all of them went home. Next day, this boss leader came back to the office early and saw his engineers were there already. So he walked to the nearest engineer and says, what happened? I told the project is finished. The engineer says, yesterday when you told us that the project is off, actually, although I'm guilty to say that, I actually felt relief because we were really crackling and really tired. So I went home, totally forget about this project, relax, have a good time with my wife, with my kids. I played with my kids, very happy, went to sleep early. In the middle of the night, suddenly the idea came out how to solve this problem. So I came in early. When I came in, my colleagues were already there and they have the same, pro same idea in their head. And we started working on it and we are quite confident we can solve this project in half, half a year. It's a real life story. So in this company, later on, they have this motto, every time they were stuck, they couldn't solve the project, they were asked, have you given up yet? So the thing is, we think, we keep thinking we will solve the problem. Same when we're in university, when you can't solve any problems, you go to sleep, the, money, the next morning you wake up, suddenly you have the solution. So it's not, when you have confidence in this, the Dharma is not confidence by, faith, uh, by blind faith. This is confident, faith in its result coming out. 
when you try one time, it works. Second time, it works. Then slowly, you won't get lost in the thinking so much. You got to go by wisdom, not by force. Okay, okay. Now we move to uh, the second noble truth. Okay, so second noble truth, I summarize it as tangha. Okay, which is um, normally translated as craving, but Panti Punyaji translates as emotional reaction. I prefer this emotional reaction because tanha not just includes uh, uh, good things or bad, uh, even uh, not just include bad things, even good things, any emotional reaction that you have. Okay, so the Buddha's definition is yayang tanha ponok bahvika nandi raga sahagata tatra tatra binandini seyat titam kama tanha bawa tanha vibawa tanha. So tanha is something like um, it is a uh, emotional reaction or craving that's accompanied by passion and delight, something that it, it, it stirs you up and you are relishing here and then there, suddenly here, suddenly there. This is um, again because of misunderstanding, okay, that we sometimes we want to have black, sometimes we have white, sometimes we love the person, sometimes we hate the person, okay, we, we switch up between different extremes. So, this, there's three types of tanha, kama tanha, sensual um, pleasure uh, tanha, which is, you can translate as craving for sensual pleasure or personalization due to our habit. Then, um, tanha due to becoming, craving because of we want to exist, and non-existence. Okay? This craving don't exist, Panti Punyaji talks uh, very well on uh, Paticca Samupada, that you are Patija Samupada, quite the dependent origination. We always think, quite often, not always, quite a lot of people have this idea that dependent origination is about our being born from one life to another life. But Bandi Punyaji has a different idea. To him, it's actually, this is another topic for another day, but just to brief you that, to him, dependent origination is a formula of how we turn our normal experience of the five aggregates or five processes into an existence. We personalize it. Again, back to the first noble truth. We personalize an experience. If we don't take an experience as personal, there's no problem. But we personalize it. So that's the problem. And the other thing is, we think that black and white is too opposite. That's why we sometimes hold that on here. A thing, another thing for you to contemplate is actually love and hate supposedly too extreme is two sides of the same coin you wouldn't hate the person unless you love the person because you have this love the attention to that person that's why you hate the person so love hate is two sides of the same coin if you can see it's a two side of the same coin then you wouldn't go this side and that side that is where using wisdom to see this emotional reaction is because you didn't see the truth then it will cease immediately there is nothing that sees when the third part the solution. It's when you see that there is nothing real in there, then it doesn't continue to exist. Similarly, like dream. You, you don't seize the wild elephant in the dream. You don't kill the wild elephant in the dream. You don't need to. When you see it's a dream, the wild elephant is gone. Similarly, in our daily life, when we get very angry with that person, if you can see that that anger comes from our thinking about what the person say, we won't continue that thinking. Then you solve. That thinking is your, your dream reality. There's two ways to solve. One is when you see that you are creating, continue creating the anger, it will solve. Another one is if you can feel the body when you are angry, you will feel the heat, you won't continue to hurt yourself. So again, by wisdom, very easy to, to solve this. Okay. Now, any questions on this before we would third noble truth? Okay, <coughs> third noble truth. So third noble truth, the Buddha. This is again in Dhamma Chaka Pavatana Sutta. Yo tasa yeva tanhaya asesa viraga nirodo chago patinisago muti analayo. So the remainderless fading and cessation of the emotional reaction or craving. That means it's totally no more through either renunciation or letting go, relinquishment, 
freedom from it, non-stick of it, of this emotional reaction or craving, that's when it ceases. When you don't have any more re- emotional, strong emotional reaction or no more craving towards something. Okay? So, um, this is something that we, we can look that the reason we, we hold on to this outside thing is because of our misconception. So again, using wisdom. Okay? Now, the last part. Okay? The last part is uh, Noble Eightfold Path. So Noble Eightfold Path, I want to show you Can you see it? Yeah? Okay. So normally we are taught sila samadhi panya, okay, which is you discipline yourself, okay, and then you calm yourself through meditation, and then you get wisdom. This is not wrong. You have to do this. If you don't even discipline yourself, you don't have five precepts. You can't get anywhere, okay. You have to have a calm mind. Otherwise, whatever I share with you today, you can't even get into your mind. And then the wisdom has to develop. Okay? But this is common to all religion. Christians know this. Muslim knows this. What is different in Buddhism is if you don't have wisdom of the next part, you are not a Buddhist. You haven't even stepped into the door of Buddhism. You might have all this, but you haven't stepped into the door of Buddhism. And what is the wisdom? Is Sama Diti, Sama Sankapo. Sama Diti translated normally as right view, but um, Bhikkhu Kumara used the word Sama as proper. I would prefer either proper or Bhante Punyaji's translation harmonious because right have this idea of right and wrong. This one is not about right and wrong because right and wrong is subjective. Your right might be my wrong, my wrong might be your right. Okay. This is proper or harmonious as in it goes towards the direction of enlightenment, awakening. Okay? So, it start off, see, Panya, we will learn, uh, no, but if we have, always start with Diti, Sama Diti, which is the view or perspective. If you can't get your view correct, you're not going anywhere. If you're, if you're going to get your direction correct, to go, let's say, if you want to go Singapore, if your direction is north, you will never reach there. Even though you can meditate very hard, you work very hard, you sit 24 hours, you're not going to get there. Meditation is important. I'm not saying not important. I'm saying that first, you've got to get your view correct. Okay? What is the view? Is Noble Eightfold Path. Uh, four Noble Truth. Four Noble Truth, Karma, Dependent Origination, those are the view. So what is Four Noble Truth? I just shared with you just now. The key thing is your personalization of events that happen out there. They are just an event, but we personalize it. Okay, this next one, if you can have this correct view, then you have to keep working on it on Sama Sankapo thought or sometimes translate orientation. Another way to look at it, I'm not saying, I'm just giving you different perspective. No perspective is 100% absolute. Okay, One way to look at it is, this is like the IQ. This is the EQ. When you have the, here you know what to do, this one has to follow, okay? So this one, how to follow on Sankapo is three parts. The Sama Sankapo, proper thought or right thought or harmonious thought or orientation, start renunciation. This renunciation is not becoming monks or nun. It's not holding on to things. And why you don't hold on to things? Because you saw it's an illusion is created by you. You don't need any effort again. If someone thinks that this pen is his, you know, he needs it to depend on it to survive, he can't let go. But if you tell him this is a poison, immediately he will throw away. So it's about seeing the truth, then you will have automatic renunciation. The letting go is automatic, like durian fruit. When it is ripe, it will let go. You don't go up and pluck, it's unripe. Can't eat. Same, harmlessness, and non-evil will happen. You won't harm other people when you see that whatever you see out there, you experience out there, is your own projection, your own creation. So what is there to harm? What is there to hateful, you have ill will with? 
So again, through wisdom. That's why um, when you have the wisdom, you only step into the Buddha's teaching. Okay? So now back to the other two. <coughs> so when you have this proper, the correct wisdom, then in your speech, action, and lifestyle, Pandey Punyaji translate as lifestyle instead of livelihood. You have to, in all these three, you have to apply what you see. You have to explore. When you speak, when you act, whatever lifestyle you have, can you see that it's your own personalization? It's your own projection. Can you see the next time when you hear someone say something, it's not he or she that makes you angry or sad or upset. It's your thinking, your interpretation, your identification of it. Can you see this? That's why I keep encouraging people to keep exploring the Dharma in your daily drama. This is actually my uh, Friday night sessions. I call it awareness of Dharma in daily drama. Because every day you have many drama. Maybe, you know, some friction with other people and so on, or disappointment with other people. Can you make use of all this to see that you are personalizing, personalizing your experience? And when you can see this in your speech, action and livelihood, you are getting very close to the next part, which is the Samadhi. Samadhi um, normally translates as concentration. I don't really like the word concentration because um, uh, nowadays many people, including Bhikkhu Kumara, has pointed that um, there is nowhere in the uh, text that Buddha asks us to fix our mind into one single object. I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm saying that it's not something that is emphasized by the Buddha. It's a method that can help us to calm our mind, but it's not emphasized, uh, not a method that Buddha specifically emphasized. So I prefer the translation of Samadhi as a composure, being able to compose. Because Adi um, is to uh, put, put, Sama is together, put together. So it's like the mind put together in place, that's composure. So this has three parts. Um, why are more effort, or sometimes uh, Bandi Punyaji translates as uh, practice, mindfulness, and then composure. So to me, is when you have the right wisdom, you keep applying in all aspects of your life, then slowly this wisdom becomes part of you no longer needs to practice, it, it, it becomes part of you. In what the Buddha says, Buddha is the Dharma, Dharma is the Buddha. So through these last three parts, when you keep moving effort towards this direction and using awareness, you will become, the, the mind will put together to become the Dharma. Okay, this is one way of seeing the, the Noble Eightfold Path. So, uh, okay, want to end with this. So one way to see the Four Noble Truth in one shot is there is Dukkha because we, we get born, grow old, get very strong, and then slowly we deteriorate or wealth we lose, and then we make the determination, next life we will work harder again, we will try harder and then keep going. Okay? And along the way, we sometimes we want this, we love someone and then we hate that person, and then we love this person, and then we hate the person. If you can see that these two is actually two sides of the same coin, there will be automatic cessation because it won't go this side and that side. So the cost just now is going this side, that side. The cessation is if you see that there are two sides of the coin, it will stop by itself. And the path is the whole picture. Okay. So basically, uh, four in one. Any questions? Thank you very much, Bhante. Let's just say sadhu three times, Bhante. Let's sadhu, 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 sadhu. Okay, we open up for questions. Uh, 
You know, I'll start first. Okay. <laughs> okay. One day we are talking about uh, to stop the uh, thinking, right? So that. Uh, uh, okay. Before you go on, I uh, never say stop thinking. <laughs> Don't stop the thinking because the try the more you try to stop thinking, the more you, thinking. You're talking come. about the overcoming fear. You say then you stop the thinking. No, <laughs> no. I'm saying that. Don't continue, continue to thinking. think. There's big difference. Okay. Okay. Sometimes two things seem similar, but it's a very big difference. To stop thinking means I don't want to think. I don't want to think. I don't want to think. <laughs> this is what most meditators, including myself, do for quite a number of years. Then more thoughts come and more thoughts and come and you get more stressful. By the time you finish the meditation session, uh, you become very stressful. You're supposed to get calm, but you become very stressful. So never ever stop thinking. But do not continue to use effort to keep, keep thinking. thinking. That's okay. a big difference. Okay, please. Right. Good question. So that I can clarify this point. But the problem still persists. Let's say I'm a spirit of the lizard. The lizard will still be there. <laughs> when I don't think about it. Or I... Okay. But when I see the lizard, then the fear automatically okay. arouse, arose in me. Good question. Okay. Uh. When you keep seeing, this one you have to explore. Okay. It's not by logic. Is by exploring. When you keep seeing that the fear of the lizard comes from your thinking, not comes from the lizard, you got to keep seeing, oh, keep seeing that the the fear comes from the thinking, not from the lizard. Right. Slowly, you're not afraid of lizard because the problem is not a lizard. The problem is your thinking. You don't have to do anything. Right. It's like. My question to you is like, if you saw your hand is in the fire, what to do to solve this problem? No need, your hand you put up. So now you saw, you think the problem is the lizard. So every time you see a lizard, you have problem. But if you can see, you have to see and realize the problem is not the lizard, is your thinking, then no problem. I give you a real life example, okay? Of course, they cannot do this anymore. This one maybe 20, 30 years. Only in America, they can do this. There is a businessman very afraid of snake. Okay? So he somehow got more and more fearful because of his thinking. Okay? Until he cannot work anymore. Like he would come to the office, he would jump on the table because he thought he saw snake, imaginary snake. Okay? His mind thinks and he can't differentiate. But our mind actually, default setting can. Okay? But he, no more default setting. So he got to go into a mental hospital already. He was, oh, he was checked into a mental hospital and supposed to be there permanently. So the wife asked this um, psychiatrist to help. This psychiatrist is a very unconventional psychiatrist because he believed, this is not a, he's a natural belief, not by force. Or, he believed there is no mad people in the world. Everyone is mentally healthy. It's default setting. It's just that somehow their mind gets lost. So, what he did was, he arranged with attendant in the, this mental hospital, in the shower room of this patient, before the patient was in, he turned on the hot shower. Okay, before that, he go and buy a lot of rubber snakes. Okay, and also he, he borrowed a real python, big real python. Okay, brought the python to this guy's shower, put the python on the shower, turn the shower on because I think they like hot water, so put a python there and put a lot of rubber snakes there, okay? Then, ask the attendant to view the guy. The guy is actually heavily drug sedated because he's a bit, you know, lost cuckoo. View him in, okay? Then, when the guy in, then suddenly he shout, no snakes! Like he's very, really frightened, fearful. Then this psychiatrist told him, until you can identify which one is real, which one is false thing, I won't bring you out. So immediately, we actually our default setting very great. He said, imaginary snakes, not there. It's just my mind. Rubber snakes, rubber snakes, real snake. Rubber snake, real snake. After that, he was cured. When he see that a lot of the snakes are imaginary, he was cured. But you can't do this exercise now. You get sued. I'm saying that the, the problem is we don't see that our problem comes from not the lizard, it comes from our thinking. We, we solve the wrong problem. It's like engineering, the car not working, you thought it is the, uh, the, 
the oil meter is problem. But actually, oil meter indicate correctly you don't have enough oil. So you have to explore. It's not difficult, but it's not. Uh, it cannot be done in one day. For some people, can. Some people like this extreme case. He saw it immediately. He check out immediately from the mental hospital. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Questions. Yeah. Okay, Bante. Uh, you see, um, I, I understand the way you look at things because you say there must be a right view or proper view, meaning that you must have the right or uh, proper understanding before you can solve the, uh, solve the problem. Now the the thing here is. What we are practicing is we we'll, we would we are actually practicing to see the proper or the right view. Like I mean, as meditation, we would like to see. Uh, <coughs> the everything is a mental construct, meaning that when you sit down, when you're applying mindfulness and you're mindful of things, then this like. Anicca, anatta will arise in you because you see the the, the ri rising and cessations of whatever mo uh, uh, body or mental processes that come in, but that is experiential understanding, meaning that you have to see it before you get the right or proper view. But if like your way, you cannot. I mean, it is rather difficult to get the proper view. Unless you experience it, you yourself. experience it in your daily life. Like for example, the next time, to me, the uh, way that I share with you, it's much easier for lay people to practice. Why? In the whole day, how many times have you got upset or angry or sad or afraid? Many times. You can see where the where all these emotion come from immediately. You don't have to find a place to go to retreat. I'm not saying retreat not good; it's very good. I'm saying that you can experience the Dharma immediately, every moment in your life, and you can apply your, explore more your view every day in your life. Because your environment, yes, you sit down, you saw your breath changing, Anicca. Not a real environment; it's a created environment. It might not work when you go out. When you go out, the boss says something that's not Anicca anymore. I'm asking you to practice it immediately in your daily life. See that that is non-self, that is Anicca immediately. Okay, but I, I mean, I have followed uh, Pandey Bunyaji for a while. I mean, I've read his, I saw his YouTube, and, but I find that he's very. Uh, scientific in this because he's a, he was a doctor. I, I, I'm not a uh, pro or against uh, Bande Punyaji. I like his translation. His method has its plus. Of, every method has its plus of, uh, or minus. But I love his translation because it gives me a totally different perspective on how to see the Dharma. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, you're saying. I I am just hoping that you can give us more real life examples of how to do it oh. so that we can slowly you know get into the understanding of what you say uh, everything is about mental constructs thinking yeah. that 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 yeah very that simple minor. i have keep stressing this um, that in your daily life especially because drama is easier okay let's say if you are drinking eating sleeping the one not so uh, not so much drama so the next time when you have a drama which is often, see where does your emotion come from. If you don't maintain the, let's say the next time you're angry, which can happen, you know, I presume many times, unless you are sane, then the next time when you're angry, see if you don't maintain that angry thought, can that anger be sustained? Practice, experiment with it. Let's say if someone says something and you get very angry, or someone do something or not do something, you get very angry, if you don't continue this chain of thought, why didn't he do this? How come he do this? Why he do this to me? He's insulting me. If you don't continue this chain of thought, can you continue to be angry? No, it's impossible. It's impossible. Then you really see Anicca, as in that anger is Anicca. And then it's practical. You don't need to 
suppress that anger anymore. In fact, don't suppress the anger. Use the anger. The next time you are angry, this is why I keep sharing uh, with people that I share. The next time you are angry, you are upset, you should be, yes, I'm happy. Now I can experiment with this anger. If no anger, then I cannot experiment. But normally when we are angry, we get Buddhist, we get very upset. Oh, I shouldn't be angry. I'm a Buddhist. How can I be like that? No. Next time when you are angry, yes, I have my opportunity. I can practice. Yes. Okay, any other good, good questions? Anger. We are always taught to watch anger, watch whatever emotion that arises in you and just watch it without clinging to it. But it keeps coming back. <laughs> it's just, yeah, like because people, it, people, it doesn't work that way if you watch to, ex, to investigate to me, it's different. It, doesn't, it keeps coming back because you think that the anger comes from that person or that thing. Then it will come back because it's not my control. It's not my fault that I'm angry because this person, this stupid person keeps saying this stupid thing, so I have to get angry. But now I'm telling you to, don't believe me, to explore that. It's not what the person say. It's what you think the person say that's caused you anger. And you don't have to continue slapping yourself. I call anger, any extreme emotion slapping yourself. You don't have to. But if you want to, it's okay. As long as you know you are slapping yourself, not that person slapping you. You won't continue for long. Sometimes you want to because you are grouchy or grumpy. But it's not harmful because you know that I am making a choice. I want to slap myself, okay? It's no other people's fault. Then it's okay. You get what I mean? I think this is much more practical than just watching, watching, seeing the angle. You can do that also. I'm not saying all the methods you have learned before are all useful. There are no methods which are not useful. But I'd like to introduce you a method which I call effortless effort. You don't need to do it only when you are in the meditation hall. Meditation hall is useful to calm your mind. If you don't have any awareness at all, your mind is running wild. Like I know an ex-schoolmate who joined my session. His mind is just, wow, I saw, I, I, I couldn't recognize him. I thought, who is this guy who, you know, I start with a meditation session. He was like, he just can't, you know, then you, you can't you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> so uh, you need the calmness of mind for meditation. So it's useful. But I'm trying to introduce you something that you can use every moment in your daily life. So you don't have to excuse anymore that Bhante, I, uh, I got to wait for the next retreat then only I can uh, learn the Dharma or the next Dharma session then I can Dharma. You can learn the Dharma every moment, every second in your daily life and you can improve spiritually every single every moment in your daily life. And you can create merits every moment in terms of wisdom. So isn't that a much big bonus? Okay, any... So is it clear about the, the way to do it? Yeah? Yeah. The way is actually the way we think is difficult, it's very easy, but whether you have the interest to do it or not. So another someone they asked me, you know, how do I manage how do I manage to get myself to apply? I say it's basically interest and curiosity. For me, since young, I always have this curious uh, curiosity and interest to understand how my mind works. If you don't have this curiosity and interest, then sorry, it's difficult to help. But, as, or, but if you have even the interest and curiosity to see why I sometimes have suffering in life, that also will be helpful. It has to come from not by force, not because, oh, okay, now is uh, Sunday, I have to come for Dharma talk, although I don't want to, I drag my feet. It's a bit difficult to work that way. It has to come that I really want to find out how my mind works, where my anger really comes from. Bante say it comes from myself. Is it? I don't think so. Let me let me check it out. Maybe Bante is 50% correct. I will trust 50%. Let me try. And then you keep trying. Okay. okay. Good question. Please do ask questions so that at least uh, through, through questions you learn more. Then I know where, where you are stuck or where you don't see. Because what I see, you might not see, okay? Because I can see very clearly. But only recently, actually, I only learned this maybe, although I've been a monk for 18, now maybe 19 years, 
I only see this maybe four or five years ago. See doesn't mean I don't get angry. I still get angry, very angry sometimes. But immediately I will see that I'm the one who's causing it. And sometimes I continue stepping myself, but I know I'm stepping myself. Okay, and it makes a big difference. Because you can't continue stepping yourself for too long. Okay, any other? Ah, good. Yeah. For, sorry for the, for the live people on internet. It's okay, it's okay, please. Okay, one day, I don't know whether this is a question or it's something that I would like to share. Like it's it's okay. on my side, on my experience. I noticed that before that, before I know uh, Buddhism, I was a Taoism. I mean, we follow our parents, we are Taoism. Okay, then when I get to know Buddhism, I know it's totally, it's a different thing. Okay, then uh, uh, after I know Buddhism, I compare to my life before I know Buddhism, I find it that my life before Buddhism is more happier than after I know Buddhism. Because you learn the wrong Buddhism. <laughs> okay, it, it might be. Then I noticed that you know, Buddhism was telling us, like just now Bhante said, you, even, even when we, every morning we chant the puja or we say, we try to like our enemy or someone that we don't like it, we try to like, like them, you know? Something like that. Like uh, just like unfriendly. We also send merits to them, this one. This is very difficult to do, you know? You don't like that person, but you still have to share the merits with them. Wish them well. So yeah, so that's why I want to answer this. Um, it didn't. It doesn't work by force. That's why I'm yes, saying that. I'm, that's why I show you that sila, samadhi, panya is our traditional understanding of four noble truth. You discipline yourself to, to try to see the, the wisdom. Uh, some people works. Some people doesn't. That's why I'm as telling you to use wisdom first. When you see that. Actually, there is no enemy out there. It's your yes. projection. Yes. Then you don't have problem sending love to all enemies because there is really no enemy. So it has to use wisdom. That's yes. why these few years I keep emphasizing wisdom rather than willpower or discipline. Especially in the modern time, uh, the current generation, you know, worse because we have been brainwashed with individualism, individual right. We don't want to people to tell us, you know, you should treat your enemy well. This one we cannot accept because we have human right, individual right. Mm -hmm. We have been brainwashed. This. So the only way to solve it is actually there's no enemy. Yes, Bante, that's why I'm trying. To, my, my next thing is that is uh, I'm trying to tell myself if I cannot accept them willingly now, is that possible for me to like one step backwards? Don't get involved with this person that's so-called that we don't like it. Okay, just step away. Unless we have no choice, like if colleague or anything that we have to work together, no matter we like it or don't like it, we still have to talk to each other to get the thing done, correct? If I have the choice, I don't need to communicate to that person. Is that okay if we just one step backwards, just uh, in the correct way? There is no correct way. <laughs> it's uh, If you can't, this is actually in the text, it says that um, Radiating meta, if you can't radiate to the enemy, don't do that first. Okay. So your method, it's okay because, but you, as long as you don't take it as the final solution. Final solution means you can do better than this next time. If you don't, don't stop there as in, ah, this is the best I can do only. Every time I just step back and uh, avoid the person. Yes, you can avoid at this time because you haven't reached there yet. Okay, no problem. Okay, let's it the other way. Let's say if um, we have to work together, yeah. okay? Is that okay to tell the truth if if that thing is really hurt that person? But that is the truth. We know that is a correct and it is good for that person. You will know what to do if you are not lost in your thoughts. Come I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you what to do because it depends on different situation. Okay. Even for myself, depending on different situation, different people, you will say different things. So you will know what to do if you are not lost in your thoughts. If you are lost in your thoughts, like 
maybe if I say like this, it will become like this. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I'm a Buddhist. If you're lost in all these thoughts, you won't make the right decision. If you are not lost in the thoughts, you will make the right decision. And if you keep exploring um, that all your experience come from your thinking, actually your enemy will change also. I give you this example, okay? Mm -hmm. There is this lady, this is a real life example, who went to see a life coach and saying that she got a lot of problem with all her colleagues. Everyone was giving her problem. So this life coach didn't try to solve her problem, just explain to her, guide her slowly on this understanding that our experience all come from our thinking, not come from out there. Okay? Guide her from different angles. This life coach is, I must admit, is a very good life coach, American. Guide her to see really that every single experience we have is not from outside, it's from our personalization, identification, interpretation of outside. Okay? Then a month later, the life coach contacted this client and asked her, how are your things? She says, oh, things have been going very well. Then the coach says, no, what about your relationship with a colleague? So, I haven't tested out your, your, your advice yet. So the coach says, what do you mean? You haven't been back to office? She said, yeah, I've been back to office, but somehow everyone has been treating me very nice. There's like no problem anymore. So I didn't really test your technique. Why? Because she changed. When she changed, the environment changed. Because the environment is your projection. But having said that, if you were to have this idea that I want to change my projection so that everyone out there will change, it won't work because you are still trying to control the world. Yeah? But if you change yourself, then outside will change. When I say change myself, doesn't mean become a doormat to let other people to step on. Yeah, people always have this wrong idea, you know. But they, does it mean that, that I don't do anything, I let people slap on me and kick me and all that? I never say that. I'm just saying that I never give you, again, I keep stressing, I never give you a fixed prescription what to do. I give you a description. The description is whatever you experience is not from out there. You are experienced from in here. When you change your in here, the out there change because it's your projection. But you got to experiment with it and many experiments. The problem is whenever I tell the truth, they don't like it. But later, they will come back. And then I said, it's better don't, don't, don't come back to me because I will hurt you again. That is my big problem. I always tell them the truth. They don't like it. But then I don't know why one, one round turn, I thought that's it for because, I, I have no relation already with it. Yeah, then later, I don't know why they always turn yeah, because back. Truth, because truth usually hurts. Okay? <laughs> okay. So Buddha actually don't tell something just because it is true. He will tell at the right time. Okay? And the person will come back to you because it helps that person. But, but it doesn't mean that the person loves you. Oh. Yeah, the person yeah, still yeah, hates yeah, you correct, because, correct. because you, you hurt them. But the person also loves you because you help them. But I hate myself for doing that, you know. I always have to be the bad person to... to... Uh, not being a bad or good person. Actually, you will know what to do if you... Um, if you get lost in your thoughts again. By default setting, our mind is calm and peace enough to know what to do. But at this moment, you might not trust this default setting yet, so you've got to keep experimenting and playing with it. So one day when you trust the default setting, you will know what to do. And then you will slowly, when you <coughs> change the way you see the world, the world will slowly change. But you've got to be patient. Any other question? No, thank you, Bante. Yeah, good, good question. Um, you have something? Oh, yeah, good. Uh, Namo Buddhaya. I have a, a different questions. Yeah. Normally, when we do dana and share merits, we share to those who have passed away. Yeah. 
but I have a mother, very old mother, and he's suffering from enzyme. So can we share Maurice to her? Can, can, can. Any good wish um, we can share for people who are alive. But he, she, she doesn't know that I'm, I, I'm doing some dana or anything uh, for her. If she knows it's better, if she doesn't know it's okay. It's still because okay. Because <coughs> they have done an experiment, maybe in the 1980s, where they get the hospital patient into two groups, they divide into two groups, A and B. A, nothing is done for them. B, they get a group of Christian, a group of Muslim, a group of Buddhist, a group of other whatever religion to send, keep sending love to this group. But this patient were not told that people are sending love to them. The group B that's been receiving love, they get cured faster. So yes, your energy helps. But of course, if she knows, it helps better. Lah. Uh, but you can't help. This great Alzheimer's, you can't help. So you can just do as much as you can. Lah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any more questions? Questions yeah. are good. Uh, Bante, just to share my experience with this brother, we, we did an experience experiment before where we uh, keep rice in three little bottles. Uh, one bottle that um, we always send loving kindness to the belt that rice in that bottle. Another bottle, we always scold it, we always condemn it. And then another bottle, just doing nothing about it. At the end of two weeks, we do see um, these three bottles of rice have different color. The one that we send uh, loving kindness to it, it remain very fresh, white color. The one that we uh, always scold it, it become black and totally dry up. But the one that neutral is just um, in between. Just to share this with you. Okay. Any other questions? Please? Okay, any questions? Or maybe I did one last question. Okay. okay. Uh, before that, Bhante, uh, yeah. I, I would like to refer back to your first slide, first slide. the Four Noble Truth. Okay. Um, you see, uh, from problem, you find out what is the cause, and then yeah. from cause, you go to solution. Yeah. And then uh, we develop a method yeah. for our solution. Yeah. But how can that method become another problem? Oh, what I'm saying is if you see the problem, you immediately see the cause, the solution, and the method is already done. So I'm saying that all of them is together at one glance. Not equal as in the same thing, as in once you see the problem, you s that problem itself is the cause, is the solution, is the method. Like a good example is dream. You are being chased by wild elephant, you thought that's the problem. The problem is not the wild elephant, it's the dream. Right? The dream is the problem, the dream is the cause. The dream is the solution because when you saw the dream, it stops. And the dream is the method. Correct or not? So I'm saying that it's four in one. Not equal as in, sorry, not equal as in the same thing. It's in, it's the sim simultaneous same time. So then your next question is, Bhante, what has dream got to do with my daily life? Your daily life is a dream because it's a projection of your thoughts. Exactly the same, no difference. So when you can see your daily event, every single daily event without fail, without exception, it's not the problem. You only have one problem, which is the dream, your projection, and it's the cause of all your problems. And it's the solution because you saw that it's a projection, you won't continue projecting it, or even if you continue projecting, you won't take it seriously. And that's the method. So, soft, one, kill all. So, it's um, the past practice that you have meditating, all that, please continue, okay? Otherwise, it, it uh, might not be so easy to see. But I feel that there are some people who have some, um, what do you call, they have maybe good karma from the past. They can see this immediately without the practice. And the practice is not wrong. But again, I point out that if you don't have the correct view, you can keep practicing very hard, don't know where you go. Okay, you can work very hard 24 hours meditating non-stop without moving. But if you don't have the correct view, you are not going anywhere. Okay. 
Okay, Bhante. Um, yeah, this four noble truth. Um, B- Buddha also mentioned that whatever have the nature of arising, will have the nature of ceasing. Uh, in the dependent origination, yes. Okay. So, what's your question? So, how does it fit into this four noble truth? Uh, whatever they have the nature of arising. Uh, that's not the part of four noble. That there is one of the dharma that Buddha taught. Whatever that uh, nature of arise ceases, that one is um, uh, dependent origination. Okay, how? you can use this is one way okay oh sorry one way that you can uh, use this is when you can see that this problem or arises because of a dream it sees immediately when you saw the arising you saw the cessation and actually the arising and the cessation comes together in this sense because that's the dream, you saw it, it's this same moment. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Vante. Yeah, actually, I was just about to ask the same question, talking about relating from uh-huh. the uh, Four Noble Truth, especially on the second one, talking about the uh, craving for existence or non existence. But then, actually, is it an irony or conflict with your um, dependent origination? Because, because of craving, that's like created. Uh, a birth of a person, is it? Yeah. So, so, what's so the we should be craving for non-existence, which is what? No, craving for non-existence is same for craving for existence, because when you don't want something, that thing will keep coming. When you don't want thoughts, try this. When you're meditating, don't think of, let's say, I don't know, your favorite food. Don't think of durian. More durian will keep coming. So, non-existence is the same. Two sides of the same coin. Yeah, so it's it, it's the same. We, 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 craving for existence and non-existence mm. is just two sides of the same coin, and it's back to um, that's why this is another thing that I realized over the years. A lot of this, our a lot of Buddhists, including myself, for many years, we thought the problem is ego, and we try to get rid of the ego. When you try to get rid of ego, the ego becomes stronger because you think that there is an ego. But Buddha says in the beginning is anatta. It's not that before you are enlightened, you are atta, you have a yeah. self. After you are enlightened, yeah. then it becomes anatta. No. Before you are enlightened, it's anatta. After you are enlightened, it's still anatta. This is a big difference. That means there is no ego to get rid. Because there is no ego in the first place. But there is not nothing. There is five processes which we mistakenly taken yeah. as a self. So we got to see that again this is an illusion created by us once we see it's a dream illusion we won't continue with this dream illusion then it stops so no need to get rid of the self because there isn't exist in the first place yeah. you're trying to get rid of nothing <laughs> yeah because as buddhists we are talking about dependent origination because of ignorance that's not the birth but then we are rejoicing when we get to b- with the kids and we got grandkids <laughs> so it's like an irony of sorts you can <laughs> uh, rejoice so, by not if you don't take it personal birth actually is not a problem the problem is when we take it personal <laughs> the person struggling okay. we take it personal same with uh, old age if you don't take it personal I am getting old I am getting lonely then actually the process is not a problem okay Okay, yeah. if there's no more question, let's uh, bow, say sadhu three times and we bow three times before merits. we share of merits. Yeah, before we share of merits with our bante. Let's uh, bow three times first. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. So just one second before we share the merits, just want to conclude for you to remember only two points. One, our natural default setting is peace, contentment, joy. It's already there. Okay, default setting. Number two is we don't experience the world. We experience our thinking or our personalization of the world. Thoughts not the problem. It's only you thinking personalization, personalizing the thoughts. Okay, I'll share the merits. 
Share merits with all devas, dharma protectors, guardian deities, share merits with all sentient beings, all family members, relative friends, especially departed family members, relative friends and chesters. <coughs> Make aspiration always with the wise, avoid the foolish, be free from great hatred delusion. And also, again, share merits with each and every single being, wishing each and every single being have equal share of merits. Etawata cha mehi sampadam punya sampadam. Sabe deva anumodantu sabe sampati sitia eta wata chame yi sampadam punya sampada sabe buta anumodantu sabe sampati sitia eta wata chame yi sampadam punya sampada sabe sata anumodantu sabe sampati sitia idame nyati nang hotu sukita hontu nyatayo Ida me nyati nang ho tu sukita hon tu nyatayo. Nyati nang ho tu sukita hon tu nyatayo. Imina punya kame na ma me bala sama gamo. Satang sama gamo ho tu yawa ni bana patia. Ida me punyang asa wa kaya wa hang ho tu. Ida me punyang ni bana sa pachayo ho tu. Mama punya bagang sabe sata nang pa jema te sabe me samam punya bagang labantu sadu 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 sukiyotu okay okay thank you very much bante okay uh, so let's yeah uh, we uh, meet downstairs at the dining uh, hall for dana with bante uh, brother and sister, uh, we will offer lunch dana to Vante. So, if even if you don't bring anything, you can join us, and we all rejoice in this.